welcome everyone to today's session on uh, wedge friction like share subscribe press bell button for latest updates before getting into this uh, actual problems of uh, wedge friction so let us know what are those the what are these uh, wedges are okay so the wedges are nothing but uh, small pieces of hard materials okay with uh, two of their uh, faces not parallel to one another that means then they, they are never parallel to one another always there will be angle between the two faces of that uh, small piece of the hard metals okay the materials they can be uh, the materials can be wood uh, or sometimes most of the times they will be made up of metals okay or sometimes it can be a rock wedge etc okay uh, applications of wedges okay uh, they are used to slightly lift the heavy blocks or slabs okay where uh, you, you need to uh, adjust uh, during constructions okay there is need to be final alignment as you can see in the picture it is very clear uh, maybe that is a casting of a uh, slab which is going on uh, after casting actually uh, the, the the slab is little lower so to make it level so wedge a metal wedge is being used uh, to in, uh, to lift it up so that can be done by actually uh, you know sending this or uh, pushing this wedge driving this wedge into the a gap between the slab and well as a bit below this below surface so as it goes inside okay uh, this will uh, go up okay so actually speaking the wedge will have a triangular shape okay uh, this way so you can see here there is a wedge like this okay and as it goes inside if you push uh, if you apply a force like this as it goes towards uh, left side the size of this uh, width will increase that's the reason why the slab will lift up okay so that initially there may be some gap which is there okay so by lifting up that gap will be reduced and all the slabs will be at same level okay so that is the reason why these wedges will be used one of the reason okay next uh, to lift the precast beams or uh, segments uh, uh, so nowadays everywhere precast segments have been used like in case of uh, construction of bridges uh, even uh, the road construction is also coming up boosting up with uh, precast constructions okay um, so in in such case of uh, cases so nowadays uh, actually there are uh, modern equipments which are, have come uh, you know so those are actually the concept of wedges has been used here so they will be uh, you know modernized and the hydraulic oil will be used to you know lift this up so this is a kind of wedge so this is actually whatever you see here is a precast segment so precast segments will be very huge uh, the um, use of this wedges is um, you know initially there won't be gap very less gap will be there below the precast segment so by using this wedge uh, it will be inserted and it will be pushed or it will be uh, some mechanism will be there so that uh, that will be pushed inside and uh, thereby the precast segment will lift up and uh, creating a gap below so then the uh, cranes will be uh, used to lift the uh, the precast segments uh, for which actually there will be uh, nylon belts which will be there so which will be inserted the gap created below the precast segments and it will be uh, surrounded by the uh, by the belt and uh, so that belt will be uh, lifted up by the crane okay there will be a crane like this right so that crane will uh, uh, lift the belt up. that's how uh, the precast segments will be lifted up and transported to uh, wherever required okay and the classic example for the application of wedge is uh, actually to split wooden logs okay for fuel purpose uh, a chisel will be used metal chisel will be used just like this okay and uh, that can be uh, you know initially driven into the wooden log uh, okay so by a hammer 
so that can be uh, inserted everywhere so that a long uh, crack will be uh, developed and thereby you can split the the wooden log and that can be used as a fuel to uh, so many things okay now let us get into the application problems of these wedges okay uh, let us take uh, the first example right a wooden block of weight uh, 5000 newton is to be raised by pushing the wedges under it using a hydraulic jack as shown in the figure okay this is the hydraulic jack given and this is the block okay this block has to be lifted up by using uh, this uh, wedge as well as the hydraulic jack so determine the horizontal force to be applied okay uh, to the hydro by the hydraulic jack to just lift the block okay so we need to determine what is the force that uh, this hydraulic jack to, jack to be applied onto the wedge so that this will be lifted up okay assume the wedge to be of negligible weight and angle of limiting friction for all contact surfaces is equal to 10 degree right the weight of the wedge is negligible so the given data is the w is 500 5000 newton the wedges wedge weight is neglected because as usual i shown you in the previous uh, you know uh, thing compared to the size of the precast segment or the slab this uh, wedge is very small okay so for illustration purpose uh, you know uh, in this problem the size of the wedge is little higher but usually the wedge size will be very less so always most of the times the weight of the wedge will be neglected so now uh, they have given the alpha equal to 10 degree that's nothing but angle of limiting friction for all contact surfaces and they have mentioned that the rollers which are there are frictionless and uh, okay and there is a the floor below is a rough floor and uh, even the uh, contact surfaces between the block and wedge is also rough there okay so um, it's understood okay it is understood so the angle of uh, limiting friction for all contact surfaces that's nothing but this between uh, these two as well as uh, these uh, two the uh, the angle of uh, limiting friction they have given at as 10 degree okay now to proceed with the problem okay to solve this problem to calculate the value of p one should be able to draw the free body diagram okay and uh, the free body diagram you you can write only when you understand understand or visualize how exactly the pushing is happening okay and uh, the how exactly the uh, in what direction the block will be moving in what direction friction i mean the wedge will be moving and it, what are the directions of the frictional forces, uh, support reaction and everything, normal reaction, etc., etc. You should know all those things. So, for which you should visualize um, how exactly the process is happening. So, in this figure, you can visualize how this process is happening. Okay. So, as the hydraulic jack is pushed, so the block will be lifted up. Since there are rollers here, so there won't be any friction. So, they will simply roll and this will lift up okay and uh, so this is not enough okay you this is how uh, the motion is taking place but you should um be able to represent uh, the forces in different directions forces reactions everything okay so that can be done in this picture you can see as the hydraulic jack pushes the wedge okay and uh, at uh, the contact surfaces the all contact surfaces there will be friction force and normal reaction which will be developed okay and here uh, let us uh, and, and you you let us consider this as the floor and this is the contact surface that's that's the reason why i've given f here and c here nc fc okay fc here and ff here nf right so this is the contact surface so as the wedge move towards uh, left so the friction force will be acting towards the right you can see ff here is acting towards right even fc is also acting towards right right and uh, since uh, so relatively the the uh, so uh, if fc acts towards right the same force fc will be acting towards left on the uh, the block okay and uh, as usual there will be normal reactions which are represented here so there will be uh, uh, there will be two normal reactions which will be there over here 
okay between the contact surfaces that's nothing but nc and nc they are in, they are equal and opposite and there will be one normal reaction which will be there at uh, uh, the contact surface between the floor and the wedge that will be upwards okay so and as as a, as given in the problem so the rollers are have are not having the friction so there is no friction force developed only normal reaction will be developed and one thing which you need to make clear here is uh, you may be thinking that since there are three rollers you should get three normal reactions but actually they will be uh, three will be there but to make it simple so we will be representing all three forces as one single force so that we can uh, solve the problem easily okay and let us draw the free body diagram separately for each body okay so if you draw the free body diagram separately as you can see here as the wedge moves towards uh, left so the friction forces act towards the right and uh, since relatively the block will move towards right compared to the wedge so the friction force will be towards left and then the normal reactions are represented as usual so always they will be inwards like this those are the normal reaction and uh, we'll be representing this applied forces p so we need to determine this force p okay after calculating all those things now let us move on to the problem okay with this free body diagram right uh, we should be able to solve our uh, the unknown values and should be able to calculate the value of p so first thing is to calculate the angles right so here they have given the angle of uh, this is given in the figure okay um, the angle of the wedge here is 20 degree and so if this is 20 degree definitely uh, the this will be uh, 70 degree okay and uh, okay um, our, you can see here the same angle will be maintained here so if this is 20 degree and uh, because this is the same uh, inclined line and this and this are parallel so this will be 20 degree and consider construct a right angle triangle like this and if this is uh, 20 degree definitely uh, the other angle will be 70 because this angle is 90 degree okay right angle triangle so why this will be right angle triangle always this normal reaction will be perpendicular to the surface and this is parallel so if you draw a triangle like this okay um, so in which uh, one angle is 20 degree and the other angle will be 70 degree and same way this is the same line definitely this also will be equal to 70 degree okay so before getting into applying the equations of equilibrium one should calculate the all angles required okay so we could able to now we can able next uh, we can resolve this using this 20 degree and we can resolve this nc by using this 70 degree so on here as well okay let us move on now consider the block first now one thing you should remember so because um, here there are there is a block and there is a wedge right so you should first consider that um, block or um, wedge in which the number of unknown should be less now if you consider these two so here there is one two three unknowns are there you cannot calculate three unknowns by using two equations of equilibrium whereas here since there uh, we know this uh, 5000 is given only one nw and uh, you should calculate nc uh, so if you calculate nc automatically you can calculate fc equal to mu times nc so there are two unknowns hence we can always uh, consider um, in this problem actually particularly it's not always in particularly to this problem so the block has to be considered first let us consider uh, the free body diagram of uh, block first as as i've uh, mentioned and uh, as i told you uh, so and in the problem they have given as alpha is equal to 10 degree so alpha is nothing but angle of limiting friction if you know the angle of limiting friction you can calculate the value of mu is equal to tan alpha and to substitute the value of alpha is equal to 10 degree we'll get the value of uh, mu is equal to 0.17 uh, six three okay now let us apply uh, the equilibrium equations okay so let's first consider sigma fy is equal to zero um so now what are the forces which are contributing to fy so one is this 
5000 and nc and fc those are the three forces which will be contributing and you can see here nc is equal to nc uh, the vertical component of nc will be because sigma fy we are considering so the vertical component of nc is nc sin 70 this is 70 degree so it, it's going upwards right next up. so the other force is fc and you can notice that uh, fc is making an angle of 20 degree with the horizontal therefore it is acting downwards hence it is negative so therefore fc sin 20 is the uh, force acting downwards okay next 5000 newton is another vertical force which is acting downwards hence it is negative okay now uh, simplifying next we know that uh, f by n is equal to mu therefore fc is equal to mu times nc and uh, substituting it fc is equal to 0.1763 nc you will get it and uh, upon substitution in the above equation you will get uh, uh, nc sin 70 minus 0.1763 nc sin 20 which is equal to 5000 so uh, then uh, simplifying it nc is equal to 5000 divided by 0.8739 okay so you you can calculate this simplification upon simplification you get this value of nc nc is equal to 5685.73 newton now uh, substituting back the value of nc in fc equation uh, you can get the value of fc fc is equal to 0.1763 into this value nc value that will give you the value of fc equal to 5 2.39 newton okay so this we can make use for the further calculations next let us consider sigma fx equal to zero okay now as you know uh, the nw is act, act, acting horizontal so therefore nw directly and it is towards right so positive next the horizontal component of nc will be acting towards left hence minus nc cos 70 is the force right next fc the horizontal component of fc will also be acting towards left hence it is negative therefore minus fc cos 20 is the uh, force next so now substituting or uh, simplifying uh, uh, further you will get the value of nw Okay, so we know here the value of NC equal to 5685.73 uh, 5, and you know the value of uh, mu. So, uh, okay, by, we know this FC is equal to mu times NC. Okay, that is what here substituted. Okay, so then you will be, uh, therefore, this is 0 0.1763 into 5,000, uh, 5,680.5.73 into cos 20 that will give you upon simplification nw is equal to 2886.58 newton okay next with those values to be with known let us move on to and consider the wedge now apply the equations of equilibrium in the case of wedge you can see first let us apply sigma fy is equal to zero and the nc component of that will be uh, uh, you know nc sine 70 since it is acting downwards so negative right next um, the fc force at the contact surface and uh, fc sin 70 will be sin 20 will be acting upward so hence positive and what is the next force nf so nf force will be acting upwards therefore it is positive simplification upon simplification you will get uh, uh, nf value okay uh, send this uh, these terms to the other side so this will become positive and this will become negative so which will give you the answer of nf equal to exactly 5000 newtons okay this is the value of nf uh, next with this nf let us proceed uh, and consider sigma fx equal to zero and here uh, uh, there will be one two three four forces which will be having their horizontal components okay let us consider one by one if you consider nc nc will have cos 70 as the horizontal component and since it is acting towards the right so it is positive therefore plus nc cos 70 next fc fc component uh, will be fc cos 20 since it is acting towards right hence positive 
next ff so completely horizontal so therefore just you just need to add ff next p the applied force is acting towards left hence uh, the value of uh, uh, i mean the sign of the p is negative therefore but here ff uh, is equal to mu times uh, nf okay therefore uh, upon substitution of mu value uh, and the nf value will get the value of ff is equal to 881.5 newton and upon substitution of ff in the in the equation number 1 we will be getting uh, the value of uh, p is equal to 3768.07 newton okay so this is how uh, you need to calculate uh, the required force p to lift uh, a 5000 newton block okay that means you need a force of 3768.07 newton to lift a wooden block of weight 5000 newton okay let us move on to the next example example number two it goes like this determine the weight of the block such that a horizontal force of 5000 newton is required to be applied by a by a hydraulic jack to just lift the wooden block up okay assume the wedge to be of negligible weight and the angle of limiting friction for all contact surfaces is 15 degree okay actually uh, this uh, problem is almost uh, similar to the previous problem okay uh, one difference is here there is no um, rollers uh, which are there and uh, thing is here you need to find out the weight of the block such that a 5000 newton force is to be applied or uh, uh, is required to just lift the block so that is the value of w which we need to find out and uh, thing is additional addi in addition to the that thing the, the, this uh, wall is a rough wall so there will be friction acting downwards Okay, because the wedge, the, the block will be moving upwards as this toward, goes towards left. So, the friction force will be acting uh, downwards. So, that friction force we should consider and solve the problem. Okay. So, let us visualize the problem now. The, the block and uh, wedge movements. So, as the wedge moves towards left, the block lifts upwards and uh, the frictional the forces are visualized that this way okay it is same as the previous problem uh, only one difference is the friction force will be acting downwards at the wall okay additional force this is the additional force and one more thing is uh, you will be applying a, a force of 5000 okay to lift the block and we need to determine that weight at which uh, you can just push by using 5000 newton right if you draw the free bar diagram separately this is how it looks and uh, only one addition uh, thing is uh, fw which will be acting downwards and uh, this is the 5000 applied and we need to find out the weight of the block okay now let's um, consider the free bar diagram so this is the free bar diagram uh, we need to draw together such a way that you can uh, calculate the angles necessary right uh, these angles are necessary to resolve the forces okay so before you apply the equations of equilibrium you need to calculate the necessary angles because this is an inclined force this is also an inclined force uh, that mean needs angle even this is inclined force this is inclined force so all those angles are calculated and it is same as the previous problem right now in this problem uh, to consider uh, to apply the equations of equilibrium one question arises so we, we do we need to consider the block first or the wedge block first okay uh, so similar to the previous problem uh, whichever in any case actually so whichever body which is having lesser number of unknowns you should consider that okay so out of these which is the one uh, which is having lesser number of unknowns that's nothing but the wedge because the 5000 newton force you know and uh, the the unknowns which you need to uh, calculate are only two here so ff you know ff you can calculate enough and fc you know fc you can calculate nc or nc if you know fc can be calculated so there are two unknowns only 
in this one so you can find out the uh, these unknowns by using two equations of equation whereas here in the block there are three unknowns w n w and uh, nc so you cannot uh, solve the problem by considering this first okay so we'll have to first consider the wedge river diagram of wedge apply the equations of equilibrium to proceed let us now consider the free world diagram of the wedge. Um, so let us apply sigma fx is equal to zero. Apply the by for applying the equations of equilibrium. Uh, so uh, the uh, in that first force is NC, and as you can see here, the horizontal component of NC is acting towards right. Hence, it is positive, and the angle is seventy. Therefore, NC cos seventy. Next, the horizontal component of FC will be acting towards right. Therefore, FC cos 20, the angle made by FC is 20 degrees. Therefore, FC cos 20 and that is plus positive. Next, we have FF and that FF is acting towards right. Hence, uh, it is considered as positive and it will be just added. So, next, 5000 Newton force and that 5000 applied force is acting towards the left. So, therefore, it will be negative and uh, which is considered to be minus 5000 and we know here um, uh, to simplify it we all always need to substitute the value of ff in terms of nf and as well as fc uh, also so here we know ff is equal to mu times nf and uh, since in the given problem uh, the alpha is given as 15 degree okay therefore substitute the value of 15 degree in this equation that's nothing but mu is equal to tan alpha you get the value of mu is equal to 0.268 okay substitution substituting that you will get ff is equal to 0.268 nf and uh, then upon the substitution of this ff in the above equation number one the equation will be reduced to uh, the shown uh, uh, equation that's nothing but nc is into cos 70 plus uh, 0.28. Only thing is, you will be substituting the value of FC. That's nothing but 0.268 NC, and then FF is equal to 0.268 NF. Those things you you are substituting here. Okay, that forms equation number two. Next, let us apply uh, sigma F y is equal to zero. Uh, to consider that, uh, first and foremost force is NF. I mean NC. And uh, the, the NC is acting, um, uh, I mean, downwards. So the vertical component will also be acting downwards, hence it is negative. Therefore, NC is sine 70. Next, so FC. FC will be acting upwards. Uh, the vertical component will also be acting upwards. Therefore, plus FC into sine 20. Mm. So the next force is NF. And NF force, you can see here, uh, it is acting upwards. So plus NF. Okay. Next, uh, so simplification upon that is nothing but substitution of uh, FC is equal to 0.268 NC. Then uh, simplifying it, um, you um, transfer uh, send these two terms the other side. Okay, so plus becomes minus and uh, minus becomes plus and plus becomes uh, minus. Uh, therefore, uh, the value of NF you will get it equal to 0.848 NC. And having this value of NF, if you substitute in this equation number two, where you have only NC and NF, then the equation will be reduced to only one unknown, and you can calculate that unknown as like this. Okay, so substitute the value of NF here in the above equation number two over here. So 0.268 NF is equal to 0.848 NC, and then you simplify it, you will get 0.8211 NC is equal to 5000. Therefore, NC is equal to, um, we'll get it equal to 6089.23 uh, Newton. So, this is the value of NC, that's nothing but normal reaction developed between the contact surface, right? Next, uh, let us consider uh, the uh, black now, okay? So, if you consider the black, right? Uh, and apply the equations of equilibrium. Let's consider sigma fx first. Okay, consider that if you consider sigma fx first is nw and that's acting out right, so positive. And next minus nc because fc uh, nc is towards left, acting towards left, so negative minus nc cos 70. And then 
uh, FC is also acting towards left. The horizontal component will also be acting towards left. So minus FC uh, cos 20. Okay. So then uh, uh, send uh, these two terms NC cos 70 and uh, FC cos 20 the other side. So NW will become this and substitute the value of FC equal to mu times uh, uh, NC. So you will get uh, uh, this equation that's nothing but nw is equal to nc cos 70 and here fc value was substituted in 0.265 nc into cos 20 and uh, you know uh, we know the value of uh, nc which is equal to 6089.23 you will be substituting here and as well as uh, uh, here as uh, also so 0.268 nc that's nothing but uh, 6089.23 into cos 20 Therefore, uh, simplifying it, the value of NW is equal to 3616.13 Newton. Okay. Next, apply sigma Fy is equal to 0. If you apply sigma Fy is equal to 0, uh, you will uh, see NC uh, sine 70, which will be acting upwards. Okay. And therefore, positive. Next, what will be the other force? will have the value of fc fc also will be inclined is inclined force so the vertical component of the force is acting downwards so therefore that is acting uh, that is uh, negative minus fc sine 20 in addition to that there will be friction force which will be acting downwards minus uh, fw okay uh, what else is the other force which will be there the weight of the block so that finally the weight of the block will be acting downwards which is an unknown so consider that uh, so minus w um, hence uh, now uh, whatever uh, other than this w uh, we have all of the things nc fc and fw so all that by and we know fc is equal to mu times uh, nc and and also fw is equal to mu times uh, nw uh, so those things you will be substituting here and finally simplify it therefore um, nc you can get it minus 0.268 uh, nc 0 0.268 uh, nw then substitute it you send the uh, w this side so therefore nc value is 0 0.6089 and then sine uh, sine t minus 268 nc is 0.6.6089.23 into sine 20 minus 0 0.268 into nw value is uh, 3616.13 newton okay now finally calculating uh, that it will give you the value of W is equal to 4194.73 Newton. What do you mean by that? You you can up you can only lift a force of 4194.13 Newton by applying a force of 5000 Newton. Now let us have a comparison between the two problems, like an analogy. Okay, we'll see whether the answer you got, which is nothing but W is equal to 4194.73 in this case, uh, and uh, the previous case uh, we have uh, got the value of P, that's nothing but the applied force. Okay, so let us see whether which is right, which is correct, why all those values and all. Okay, so now uh, example one, uh, the in that we have got uh, actually given value of W is 5000 Newton. So to lift that 5000 Newton, we are supposed to apply a force of uh, 3768.07 Newton. Okay. In the second example, so the given value was P. Okay. Uh, but we are supposed to find out the the maximum weight the uh, this can be lifted, which is equal to 4194.70. Now let us have a comparison. You can see here. Uh, you need very less force to lift 5000 newton but whereas here uh, you know you there, there is very a lot of force which is greater than this is necessary to lift less load okay so you may think that it is wrong right? because you know how can the same problem actually okay uh, here uh, you need uh, a force of 360 to lift 5000 but to lift uh, the load lesser than this definitely this should be lesser load okay but how come uh, the value of w is um, you know 4194 here so there is a reason for it the reason is you can see here in the example number one 
one one uh, problem one uh, point is there are, there are rollers here there is no friction so easily you can lift up that is one uh, thing and also the 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 angle of limiting friction given for the example one is uh, 10 degree and the mu is 0.1763 whereas in the example two the angle of limiting friction given is 15 degree and uh, the value of mu comes equal to 0.268 and uh, we all know that if the coefficient of friction is more the resistance will also be more that is friction will also be more and uh, hence uh, compared to example number one there are more frictions uh, everywhere okay so hence you need to apply more force to lift lesser weight whereas here less force to lift higher load you can easily lift up because there is no friction or less friction there is no friction here and less friction all at all other context whereas here there is friction here there is here friction you have friction here also so totally the there will be more friction which will be there hence you will can lift only less weight okay that's how you should compare always i always always insist uh, students to think over uh, the problems you just not uh, you know uh, solve the problem mechanically and give the answer this is uh, that much newton this much newton that will not serve any purpose so always you will be thinking why this is uh, so much and why this is not uh, you know less why this is higher all those analogy you should make okay during uh, solving the problems okay so that's all from this class Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, press bell button for latest updates.